Fish, Johnson, Cole, Here. Lawrence, Here. Marcel, Steen, Mary Buck. Well, first, I apologize for the confusion because I thought it was Monday. And <laughs> I know. I was proven wrong. Now I feel like, what did I miss? <laughs> anyway, I handed out a, a scorecard for you. Um, kind of the, the uh, list that I gave you at the last budget work session regarding potential changes the two that are the three that are listed on there the consensus at the last meeting was not to do the the city hall roofs we moved the backhoe from general fund to the water department so that reduced the general fund deficit and then the more out of the parks department so uh, as we go through the the list. Any questions on what's listed there? I mean, the Risty Barn, I think everybody knows what the Risty Barn is out there. Uh, that's based on, uh, I think the report was 87000 to put a roof and siding, whatever needed to, to do to shore it up. City Hall design of half a million. The police department includes two vehicles, fire department staffing request, building inspection vehicle to replace their 2000 and A bucket truck, a one-ton truck, uh, sidewalks, repairs, senior citizens, and summer rec, the pool, a bunch of equipment that needs to be replaced, and then some equipment in the, in the parks department. And where would you like to start? The Risty Barn. Um, you know, we've got that working group together that includes the Van Buskirks, the Historical Society of the city. Uh, we brought the chamber into it. GFMP is in it. I'm not sure how active they'll be. That group is trying to determine what to do with the barn or the property. So do we need to do the barn next year or make the repairs to the barn next year? I don't I don't know. They'll need to be made at some point in time. So and and just just as a reminder, we've got that I am twenty If that goes through, you know, we're going to have to really look at some some budget decisions, um, probably in 26's budget, just based on the lost revenue. But Well, it would be nice, too, if, if possibly with the Risty Barn, uh, we couldn't work together with the Chamber somehow to do some type of a capital project and get some sponsorships and donations and, and maybe fund it that way rather than out of a city budget that's already and Van Buskirk has, has committed funds to the development of the site. Now, would that be to, we haven't gotten that far into the weeds yet on that barn. Who's going to pay for it? Personally, I'd prefer to leave it in there myself because I'm afraid if we don't do it and then we hit IM28, then for sure we're not going to do it. And I think that would be a real loss. I think, I think they'll come through, but... For years and years, we, we kept money, held money back for hockey. We never had to use it, um, but we always kept it in there. Um, let, let's keep going and see where, you know, what else we could look at. We can always come back to it. Yep. You know, the city hall design, that's to design the new city hall for this site. The, the police department, that's two vehicles. That's fifty one grand a, a pop. So, you know, if you cut anything out of there, you would cut fifty one. Ten or twenty out of the police vehicle, you'd eliminate one whole vehicle. So, and we're getting to that stage. Uh, we're probably it's probably going to be more frequent where we're replacing two vehicles instead of the one. We used to be on a seven-year rotation. Six years were one vehicle. One year was a two. We'll probably bump that up. The pickup truck that is currently in the police fleet will 
will be going to the engineering department. Unless we need it for a council meeting. No? Okay. The fire department funding request is to, for pay for on call and then call times. Like I said, the building inspection vehicle, if you listen to it, it runs out in the parking lot. I think it's on its last leg. Uh, yeah. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Highways and streets, we've got the bucket truck and then a one ton truck. We slip the arm with the bucket on it to do the, we do lights with it. We do Christmas decorations with it. We do tree trimming. One ton truck would include a plow. And we put it into our snow removal fleet. Uh, sidewalk repairs. Um, we've averaged about 34,000 a year in sidewalk repairs. I think last year we Fifty-five, but other than that, it's been well below. So we've averaged about thirty-four thousand a year there. So you know that might be a place to to reduce it down to like thirty-five. Reduce it by fifteen. Like I said, the senior citizen rent, summer rent program, uh, I don't necessarily think you want to touch those. The pool equipment replacement, there's a bunch of stuff that's included in that. Lights, VFD, search tank, filters. Most of that's all original equipment, so it's, it's 33 years old. I think that's a priority, isn't it, Devin? Because we can't even find the lights, right? So, yeah. Uh, Four-wheeler, we use that for spraying and okay. mosquitoes. No. Small equipment is uh, handheld tools. Uh, the robot painter we've talked about for painting soccer fields, baseball fields, football fields. And that includes, thank you. So more service, but not necessarily more staffing or anything like that. Uh, skid loader, that would have one at McCarty Park and Aspen instead of driving one. Okay, well, I'm seeing, again, the deficit right now, 698. But if we get rid of the roofs at 300, the backhoe, 85. Mm -hmm. Reduce the sidewalks by 15 grand. And for sure, that, that mower moved 264,000, roughly. Roughly. Yep. So I guess I'd love to talk, uh, the ones I'd love to talk about would just be what we want to do with the fire department. And then I know it's not on here, but I would really like to have a discussion about uh, the city council pay and the mayor pay, yeah. if we could. That's fine. So, fire fire department. Um, I think we all know how important this is for our community, but I also think we know 
what kind of asset is for us going into IM28. Um, I think I love Dave's idea. So I, I guess, Dave, I'd love you to, I know Barb wasn't here the last time, maybe you'd speak into that a little bit if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Uh, my, my thought is that we put this off, at least for this year, put together a group, a study group, um, with all the stakeholders involved, fire department, city, uh, council members, uh, and take a look at it from the standpoint of, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but a fire district uh, with tax inability. And I, my understanding, and we'd have to learn a little bit more about it, but my understanding is that you can build that, build that budget up. You don't have to start at what you're at right now, but with a proposal of having full-time people. And, uh, and so that if and when it was approved, it would, uh, it would go out and would more than, you know, it would satisfy this along with everything else. It's, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if you, if you know more about it uh, at this point. So the fire district carries with it quite a few restrictions. We have two years to set that mill, two years, and our budget has to be exact of what we ask. Um, it goes up by increases of rate of growth, but that mill levy itself basically stays. We're not at the point where we can justify full-time staffing right now. We don't need a two or three person full crew at the station 100% of the time. When we go to that, now you're talking full staff, you're talking wages and benefits, and that's going to add, what is a full-time employee? 80,000 with benefits, a little more? So you're at 100,000 current. If, if you'd go that way, I mean, yeah. So you're still looking at three full-time, that's $300,000. In order to jump that budget by $300,000, we'd have to opt out. Correct me if I'm wrong. Our board president has done weeks of research on this. So we can go to a fire district. The problem is we set that budget for what our budget, or we set that mill lever for what our budget requirement is right now, we're locked. Other than the rate of growth and try and opt out. Um, talk to a fire truck manufacturer, 15% increase in one year. Uh, second year since COVID, it had two increases, and they averaged about 12 for that year. Um, we won't be able to fire, buy a fire truck. With that continues to grow, our fire protection equipment grows by 8 to 10% the last few years. We used to be able to figure a 3 to 5%. So we're not even keeping up with replacing our gear. So, okay. so we can definitely look at... Yeah, I think I think we need to look at it. The other thing that we we have is that the way you know the, the formula, and I left it at home, but the formula that I, I saw or the sheet that you you presented, explaining there was a cost for this, cost for this, and a cost for this. Uh, that's based on 25 current uh, members. So if things take off and you get your 40. You know, does our does our cost go up exponentially to cover the cost of the, the additional 15 employees? It could, as far as your meetings and trainings. Yeah, but not the on call. Not yeah. history. History wouldn't support that. Well, history wouldn't. So. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but um, you know, potentially well, I, there's. I can tell you what happened in the past, right? We can go. Yeah. Future can be predicted by the past. So we haven't had over 27. And but we haven't been paying for call outs and things of that nature either, have we? Right, but again, no. we're not hiring anyone full time. We're still asking right. them just to I get, yeah. on call. So we're not taking anyone away. No one's quitting their job to be like, oh, yeah, I'll come and take call. Unless you guys want to. I'm happy to take more guys anytime. But no one's going to, you know, retire from their position. Still asking them to volunteer the majority of their time. So if you if you go to this, I mean these are all questions that need to be asked. If you go to this, 
how long do you anticipate uh, you know a formula with with people on call and and uh, everything would that carry the fire department starting today if uh, going out into the future before you needed to start putting on a you know a couple of full-time staffers basically it depends on call volume and availability of personnel and size of size of growth within mm -hmm. the city or yep. within the uh, yep. your, your fire district we would hope that this would hold us three to five years that that's what we have kind of sensed now obviously much like your statement of unknowns um, that's unknown as we talked with Brian like what's we asked Brian what's the city gonna be in five years <laughs> he gave us the same, <laughs> right exactly the same response he just gave us now and yeah. I totally get that so to ask us how long we think it'll last it is I'll give the response to Brian I don't know right because that's that's unfair to, to know um, but we would hope that it would last three to five knowing that it takes three years just to even put a district together even if we started today it would be 2027 before we got any before we could do anything so that's that's why this would be a great bridge to that if that's where and if that's what we saw the growth was. But you have to understand also from our standpoint that uh, $270,000 uh, dropped on us uh, like this without having this exploration is, is kind of a tough pill, especially with, you know, there's, there's IM28 coming, there's a, a study group on, on property tax relief, what, potential is that going to do uh, to the municipality and to our budget and we've got all these other needs also that we have to address I'm just saying that I'm not against your plan don't get me wrong I'm not against the plan and and, uh, and working at getting it there but I, I, I still think that we need to be in on that exploration of it and and again we're not going to get that done this budget And this would be in addition to the 136,000 and the 170,000 already yep. that's yep. in our budget. Yep. So what we have right now is operating expenses and uh, capital equipment. So we're at 300,000, 400, 300,000 plus this. Okay. Yep. So that would put us over 500,000. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Math skills aren't too strong. Anything else? Yeah, I guess, you know, not as much questions as, as much. I kind of reiterate, I guess, what Dave said, that I feel like we just need to sit down with you guys. None of us, I think, are, are saying this is something we can't get to. I just think right now with our budget restrictions, we just need to pause for maybe for, for a year until we can figure out, okay, how can we, how can we help you guys in, uh, with the growing needs of our community and just the budgetary needs that you have compared to what the city has at the same time. So, I would I, I would say that we go down that path too of of uh, some sort of committee. Put together. I hate committees, don't get me wrong, but for this standpoint, I think it needs to be done. There, you know, there's a ton out west. Um, Community-wise, I, I don't know very many in communities. Yeah, I think Box Elder. Most of Elder, them are rural. Yeah, Box Elder is the only one that I'm aware of that has a that I could find. Vermilion yeah. has a fire district, but it's outside, outside the city. city limits, they, I believe. they contract with the Vermilion Fire Department for services. Um, so. yeah. But most fire districts are set up for the rural areas. And then, like Brian said, they may contract with a local fire department. Communities this size, I don't know of any in the state. My understanding of the process, there would have to be two votes if you do a city and a township. Um, in the 
township, there would have to be a petition or drive to submit it to a vote. And the city, the city council could do a resolution authorizing a vote. So there would be two separate referendums, the way I read it anyway, to enact the final resolution. Are you, are you asking for a public vote or just a city council vote? No, it would be public referendum. There would be. You know, you, uh, Robert, you were saying that you, you have to set the mill right away. I mean, maybe there's some sort of, if this study group works together, maybe there's some sort of a compromise where you set the mill and we can help subsidize the mill? Don't, I don't know if we can do that. But I mean, we could put that in our budget rather than the whole schmear. I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, once that fire district, if it were to be enacted, we would not no longer have the, the contract payments or anything from No, the, the, the way, if you want to do something like that, it would be, a, a, the township would be the fire district, and then the city could contract with the fire district, just like we do now. They're a separate entity. Um, I, once the fire district is formed, including the city, I don't think that we could supplement the levy other than payment in lieu of taxes for city buildings. Nonprofits, I believe, right? Yeah, any nonprofits. Yeah. Churches, Churches, schools, schools cities, cities. Yes. Yep. Yep. Right. So well, currently, I mean, the fire district would, all, would also allow them, and I actually think it says they shall collect from the nonprofits, such as schools, churches, and then any city property, which they are currently not receiving right now, well, except from the city. So I think I think there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. I think there's a lot of ways that um, sources can be done in the fire district. I think it just needs to be talked about in the working group. There are two different levies. There's an operations levy and there's an equipment levy. So there's there's a lot of things that need to be discussed. In my opinion. I'm not sure what, what you mean by that. Like what's From what I've looked into, there's an operations levy at a dollar and there's an equipment levy at 60 cents. Max. Okay. Up Max. two. So there are two levies. <laughs> They've got more than two. I guess the, our content experts uh, do not share that and no other fire district in the state has discussed that with that same detail. Right. And we just found about, out about this what, a month ago. So those are things yeah. that we need we'll to look at and look at statutes. And those are things that we need to research, too, to help understand those fire districts. And that is where we can come together and help you guys understand them as well. Just because a lot of people in the state don't have a fire district in, the, in a city or a community, the state allows that. Yeah, it's allowed. So it's right. allowed. But we have no history to go on with cities yep. our size, is what we're saying. Yep. We can be trailblazers. And plus, we'll need to get lease involved. Yeah, no, there's, it's, there's, there's a process to create it. Um, you know, another thing at least to throw into the discussion to muddy the waters even more um, would be that the 270, um, you know, the council could certainly opt out for that. I mean, that's, that's an option. It, it could be subject to reference. It's too late for 2025. You've got to certify an opt out before July 15th of each year. So it's too late for 2025, but it's something to think about that, you know, we've got our budget pressures on our own, but to fund the 270 for personnel for the fire department, I think you could certainly put together an opt-out for that. I mean, the county just opted out, what, $2 million for 25 years or something like that? So theoretically, you know, if we're looking, let's say, five years, fire department deems it reasonable to create a fire district, hey, let's, let's opt out for 270 a year for the next five years. Could be, could be, but uh, city council would have to certify a resolution by July 15th saying we are going to opt out X amount of money for X amount of time. And then there's the 20 day before the resolution becomes effective in which time residents can petition for a vote. 
So I mean, it, it, there's always that wrinkle. Um, but it's, it's again, that would also give us an opportunity to educate the public on why we would be doing that. Correct. And you know, it, we, it's been my opinion with opt outs, you don't want to just put it on the first meeting of July that the city council is going to have an opt out for something. You start building the, you know, the, the public education program for it. You approve the opt out and then wait for the petition. If the petition doesn't come in, if there's no petition, the opt out becomes effective for the following year. So if you did it in July 15th of 2025, the opt out levy would come into effect for taxes payable 26. So then instead of our levy going up, 3% plus growth, or CPI plus growth, it would also include on top of that the 270 that was opted out. Any Some other questions? Way. I appreciate all the work you guys have put into this and I know it's a I know it's a challenge. It's a challenge for us too. We don't want to say no, but I I think I'm going to have to at this point until we get some. I, I can see a lot of volunteers on child support now. Some of us are <laughs> aged out. <laughs> some of us are short timers, so I think it's better. Somebody else does it. Um. You know, if you wanted to go down the road of a study committee, um, or not committee, stu uh, study group, sorry, um, I, I would think it would be the city, the fire department township and I'd even probably bring the county into it because they're a funding source as well we got their numbers we didn't get their formula as to how their levy is distributed or determined um, but we did get breakdown. the breakdown if the if the school is going to be I don't know if assessed is the right word, but if they're going to be involved, I would pull the school in too, just because they're a big piece of our community. Well, this, the school wouldn't necessarily automatically be assessed or taxed on a fire district. They're still tax exempt. So it would have to, in my understanding, it would have to be a direct contract with between the fire department and the school and the churches and the city to levy that fee against their property. It's, I call it a payment in lieu of taxes for tax exempt entities. If they're nice enough, they pay an equal share of property taxes to the city, but it's they're tax exempt. So that would be between the fire district and the school. No, not automatically. Yep. That'd be like that. Uh, was that in Pennsylvania? years ago the neighbor's house burned and or the, no the guy's house was on fire he didn't pay his his association fee and the fire department pulled up and and uh, let it burn yep protected the ones that had paid their fees <laughs> no no not not talking about charging fees, no. No. If you want you want me to reach out to Township County? So if we take out the fire department, we're down to about $8,700 that we would have to find. Um, talking about the council and mayor pay, if um, if you would reduce it back to where I had presented it, that would, that was about $15,000. Yeah, it would take it out. So then you would be to the positive seven grand, six or seven thousand. I mean, I love... What the mayor, I love what you're doing there. I mean, comparing us to other towns, but I just can't. The optics of this, of 
us getting a pay raise in amongst this time right now. I just, we all know we're not doing this for the money, but at the same time, yes. We're, what's that? If we could, it would. <laughs> Can we be volunteers, staff? What? City council and mayor can be volunteer positions? Certainly. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we're going to go all the way back on that, obviously. But, I mean, yeah, I, I figured that, yeah, if we went to what Christine had originally proposed, we'd save 12000 on city council and 2100 on mayor. If my numbers are right, is that about roughly? 50, okay. So that'd be my, I guess I would, you know, we're, not going to fund the fire department. I just have a tough time saying, hey, we should give ourselves a raise. I understand. We're way beyond other towns in our in our size, but at the same time. Um, Well, I, I think as, as part of that group to study this, um, that may, that I think that's part of that discussion. I mean, even though the call volumes aren't currently high enough, but you've got that levy that you want to set high enough for future use. So I think that might be the discussion that you have is, hey, do you want to, in your initial uh, fire district, to include full-time staff. But I think that's, that's part of that discussion that, that should occur. Million Spearfish, uh, Mitchell, Box Elder, uh, Huron to a degree. Yeah, Huron's about as large as I like to compare to. You know, I, we, can, we can look at Brookings, we can look at Watertown, but now we're going to go. Yep. Yankton. Robert, if if you go to this uh, on call in any measure, does that mean that you you then are paying for kind of obligated to pay for training and other things? So even if you if you only had twelve hours a day covered on the twenty four seven on call, you would still be paying, and so it wouldn't really reduce it that much. Once, 
yeah, once you once you start paying for the on call, I think you explained that then you're obligated to start paying for training time and for call outs. So it doesn't really it doesn't really change the equation. That's why that's why we need to study this. Yeah, I don't want to just pull a number out of the air, I guess, just to balance the budget. So I I forgot Bri Brian was looking at and brought down the sidewalks too. So it, it whatever the discussion is on May or council pay if you want to take that back or if you want to take the sidewalks back to average. I don't think we need to do more than average on the sidewalks. Well, I think the optics would be bad if we increased our wages. So I'm with Colin on that one. I appreciate it, but yeah, I think the same on uh, council wages. Um, going that much more, um, what is that? Almost a thirty percent increase with CPI right now. It's now what under under three, twenty nine, twenty nine. Yeah, that's up to seventy five percent of what the other towns are doing in two thousand twenty two. The other towns may have more revenue. You know, if, if you look at that, uh, we're 62 under budget or revenues over expenditures with the reduction in the sidewalk to average. And then if you took the 15,000 legislative pay, you're at 21 under four. Of course, I want that put back into parks. <laughs> Guys, all think that we should do a hundred grand for, for this department. I think it's just a placeholder. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know. I, I think as far as the risk and bond goes, I think it, it should be a partnership. I don't know if the city should fund one hundred percent of it, but we certainly should partner with. Like I said, that bus for seventy eight is a number. I don't know if exactly what that. They commit that to. Yeah, I don't know. could reduce the risky bar to fifty thousand and say everybody else has to generate the other fifty for the town. Mayor, if we reduce it, what's that what what's that gonna cover? I mean is that I don't wanna just throw out some numbers to I mean, are you thinking that we go to the fire department then? I mean I don't care what the I just I don't know. I mean if we take out the back to the requested on the council mayor and pay and re reduce the sidewalks for them to balance. Yeah, well, so, I mean, there's really nothing else you have to, you have to take out. Yeah. So if we don't use the money for the RISD barn, it just stays in the operating it stays in the government fund, fund balance. So. We, we wouldn't earmark it for 26. what I will put together then for the budget ordinance for September. It's on a Tuesday, September 3rd meeting. Um, did we leave Sioux Metro in there then? Yes. yes. That was a consensus. It's, it's 38. No, it went down last year. 33. It went down a little bit, I'm assuming, because of our population census yeah. numbers that are off. <laughs> yeah, and it's not going to make or break us for the 36 that comes out of paying for the sales tax. Um, I think there is a pretty valid point that if we don't participate with them, even though we don't get much help from them, um, you know, they wouldn't advocate for a business location with the new staff being gone. I think just with new leadership, I think it's nice to maybe for, for the, this upcoming year for sure, keep 